Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Max, and today I wanted to talk about external storage for your Tesla. Now, the genesis of this video actually came from a conversation I had with a coworker of mine who owns a Tesla Model 3 and did before I did. Once I got the car and she found out I was making content around the vehicle, she brought up the fact that her sentry mode frequently called out that it detected events, but then when she went to go check the drive, there was no content on there for her to review. I had actually experienced some of this myself in the short time of owning the car and using the provided USB storage, so I felt making a video going over why you should replace the USB with a different option would be useful for many viewers. If you own a Tesla, you know that they provide you with one of their own 128 gigabyte thumb drives with the purchase of the vehicle. Ours came pre-installed in the glove box USB, and this acts as your external storage for mainly sentry mode recording events. If the car is older than 2021, I do believe that this USB drive is actually in your middle console, and you should replace this drive. Not only is 120 gigs not a ton of space to begin with, but like I said, because of the type of thumb drive it is, it's prone to having data save issues. There have been reports of lagging videos, delayed starts, and like I said at the beginning of the video, just simply events that aren't saving at all to the drive. It is not a very reliable piece of hardware. And there are many options out there for you to replace this drive that have different ranges of affordability. For example, my father-in-law, who's an electrical engineer himself, went with a Samsung Pro Endurance micro SD card made especially for dash cams, along with a little micro SD USB reader that he plugs directly into his car. That solves the problem of the extra space and gives him better writing speed, all at a very affordable price if you don't necessarily want to spend a ton to solve this issue. However, pretty unanimously on sites that I've read and articles that I've read, the best option to go for if you're willing to pay for it is a solid state drive like the one that I have right here. Now, when I say this, do not go and buy Tesla's version of this unless you want to drop $250 for something that you can get at a fraction of the price elsewhere. What I ended up going with was again the most popular and most highly rated option, which is a Samsung T7 one terabyte drive. Mine happens to be blue simply because it was the cheapest option on Amazon when I went to shop. The black and the red one were both more expensive and you're not going to see this anyways because it plugs into your glove box. So having a more neutral color is kind of NA in my opinion, but yep, went for the blue because it was 10 to $20 less than the other options. And then I also went for the one terabyte sizing because that was only $4 more than the 500 gigs in the blue color at the time when I made this purchase. I would say be careful though, as some of the larger SSDs require more power to be pulled than your USB is designed for. So make sure you do check out your specs and make sure they align with whatever your car requires or is limited to. This particular Samsung SSD supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 interface. It has 1,050 megabytes per second read and 1,000 megabytes per second write speed, has a durable shock resistant design, which is great for driving around in, and is listed to have operational temperatures from 32 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be more than enough for your typical needs. I'll include the Amazon link in the description below, but as of when I purchased this, the version I got was only $79.99. Again, there are plenty of options out there. This just happened to be the one that I went with. So definitely do your research and pick whatever is right for you. It just comes with your SSD and some directions in the back with a wire to plug it in with. So yeah, with that, let's go through installation. So to start with, you wanna make sure that you eject your old USB prior to removing. You do this by going up and clicking on that sentry mode icon and making sure that it is not listed as red, which means it is actively writing. Once you make sure that is turned off, you can go ahead and unplug the USB from the USB slot within the glove box and plug in your new SSD. From here, all that is left to do is to format this drive for your car. Now back on the main display, you go over to safety and you'll see this option here where it says format USB drive to enable dash cam. Tap on that. Notice that anything currently on the drive will potentially be deleted. So if you're using the drive for something else, make sure you back it up elsewhere as this warning says that all data will be deleted. You just hit format. And that's it. Hit set success and we are good to go. Since we installed the drive, I haven't seen any of the issues that I saw previously with sentry mode events not capturing properly, which is great to see. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. And if you ever want to check events not on your car, 
you can always safely eject this SSD the same way we took out the USB card, plug it into your computer and open up that drive and you should see all of your history saved and categorized in this format. Anyways, that's all I had today. If you have any other ideas or comments on things that you could be or should be using for your external storage within your Tesla, please add it to the comment section below. And as always, if you like this and you wanna see more, please like, comment, and subscribe to see more. Thank you for watching. Until next time.